Hello, and welcome to a low-mass manned SSTO mission to Minmus and back in Kerbal Space Program. To my knowledge, the vehicle that Valentina will be using is the lightest of its kind, with a launch mass of under 4 tonnes, the pilot's mass included. To put this into perspective, this is lighter than a single vector engine, with no fuel, cockpit, or any means of control. As in the previous mission, I will detail the ways I managed to minimise the mass of this craft over the course of the video. But first, let's jump straight into the extremely specific launch profile and see if Valentina can get this thing to orbit. The two radial intakes provide enough air for the rapier engine to reach a static thrust capable of lifting the craft off the ground, at which point we immediately pitch down to 80 degrees and start climbing. At 60 meters per second, we switch the SAS to prograde and hold it there for the rest of the ascent out of the atmosphere. Whether Val succeeds in getting to orbit or fails and falls back to Kerbin is all determined in these first few seconds, as if everything is done correctly then the craft will follow an optimal gravity turn and utilize the open cycle mode of the engine for as long as possible. This is essential to squeeze every last drop of efficiency out of the ascent which is something we want because in testing, I found that there is less than 1% margin for error in terms of liquid fuel usage. The combination of the insane thrust of the rapier engine with a craft this aerodynamic and light results in over 9 Gs of acceleration and Valentina regretting their decision to eat lunch just before takeoff. The profile of the ascent also means that the SSTO narrowly avoids disintegration due to overheating achieving a speed of over 1,720 meters per second relative to the surface on the air-breathing mode alone. At 26 kilometers, the intakes can't provide enough air anymore, and so we close them and switch the rapier to close cycle mode, raising our apoapsis to 73 kilometers before cutting the engine. The relatively flat trajectory has got the SSTO most of the way to orbit, and thanks to its low drag, our apoapsis has only dropped a little by the time we cross Kerbin's Kármán line. Circularization of the SSTO's orbit is just as unconventional as the rest of the ascent. Even though the hypothetical most efficient time would be to circularize at our apoapsis, we instead burn the last of our remaining liquid fuel and oxidizer 50 seconds before, leaving the craft with less than 0.12 units of unusable spare fuel, which is less than 0.16% of what it started with. With no fuel left to use, the rapier engine has propelled the craft just shy of 2200 meters per second and so we open the cargo bay to reveal Valentina's cockpit companion, a trusty iron engine, which after spinning the craft around, we activate and continue heading to orbit. The low thrust of the iron engine is the reason we didn't circularize the tap apsis, as by burning a bit earlier we can face the iron engine directly in the prograde direction, rather than angling down in order to main altitude. Facing prograde also grants this single solar panel maximum exposure to the sunlight, buying Val slightly more time before the SSTO depletes all of its electric charge. Doing so is essential to reach orbit, making the timing of the launch another critical factor of this mission. Having survived extreme heating, crushing g-forces, and the stress of having virtually no room for error, Valentina has made it to orbit of Kerbin without discarding any stages of her craft and using under one ton of fuel to get there. Now, she only has to use less than a tenth of that to travel nearly 50,000 kilometers out to Minmus's orbit and back. Luckily, Xenon is our efficient friend and the iron engine will be ready to head out as soon as the batteries are recharged, which takes just a few orbits of Kerbin to do. In the meantime, we set up a maneuver that will place the craft into a transfer orbit to Minmus. As Minmus is on an inclined orbit of Kerbin, the goal is to intersect Minmus's orbit at its descending node, so as to eliminate the need for an inclination change, and therefore saving fuel. So to make this clearer, if you imagine the orbit of the SSTO to be a horizontal line, and Minmus's orbit to be a diagonal one drawn on top of it, this means that we want the SSTO to arrive at Minmus where those two lines meet. 
To further maximise efficiency, the transfer to minimus is timed so as to also benefit from a gravity assist from the moment. I'd like to say that I'm smart enough to plan this type of manoeuvre through careful planning and mathematics alone, but I have to instead get by on having a rough idea and then playing around with manoeuvre nodes until something looks like it might work. I think that the fact that I'm able to do this is one of KSP's biggest strengths. It's playground rocket science, and if you want to build a sandcastle then you can. I just want to build a very small one and send it to the moon. Whilst the transfer to Minmus is planned, the limited battery bank and low thrust of the iron engine mean that we can't execute it in one go. Instead, we gradually raise our apoapsis over multiple orbits of Kerbin until the remaining velocity change is achievable in a single burn at periapsis. So, as Valentina completes the Minmus transfer and conducts a couple of minor correction burns, I'd like to talk a little more about the craft and the mission in general. While piloting this mission wasn't easy, especially considering the fact that once using the iron engine, the navball annoyingly is misaligned with the direction of thrust by 90 degrees, the relative simplicity of the gravity assists and other manoeuvres made this mission easier to fly than the previous 5 ton trip to Tylo and back. On the other hand, while the craft used for the Tylo video took 68 iterations in the design phase, this SSTO took over 100, with nearly every iteration having been test flown at least once, but in many cases, several times. I've considered making a video about minimization for low mass missions, but no promises. Obviously missions such as this are taking weight saving measures to the extreme, but learning the value of reducing the mass of crafts and how to do so are skills that can be implemented in nearly any mission. Striving to minimize the mass of a craft forces you to consider all the other sources of inefficiency and how they can be improved, such as the aerodynamic profile of the craft, its center of lift in relation to its center of mass, and how the craft is actually flown. I think this is part of what draws me to this type of mission, as to reduce the SSTO's mass by just the weight of a Kerbal, I had to utilize nearly every method I knew. Anyway, with Valentina safely in a highly eccentric orbit of Minmus, we set a manoeuvre to reduce the inclination to be close to equatorial. Whilst this step isn't completely necessary, it will make the next phase of the mission a lot easier. Valentina waits until periapsis before climbing out of the cargo bay and stretching her legs. Now, anyone familiar with the Odyssey by Bill should be able to guess what's coming next. Val uses her EVA pack to slow herself into a low circular orbit before fully committing and setting herself onto a suborbital trajectory, narrowly dodging some misplaced hills as she coasts over the dark side of the moon. With her landing zone coming into sight, she decelerates and creeps closer to the surface until she hits it at just under 45 meters per second and begins her high velocity breakdancing routine. With the dance routine finished, Valentina has made it all the way from the surface of Kerbin to its farthest moon, using a sub 4 ton single stage craft and the fuel of her spacesuit alone. Not one to linger, she prepares to use the rest of the fuel in her EVA pack to get into orbit and reunite with her craft, at which point she gets a strange sense of deja vu. In the first video I made, I stated that at the time I had no plans to record any more missions. It may have taken over one and a half years and a global pandemic, but I eventually found the time to make another, which was also made possible by the fact that I regained access to a computer that can actually run the game, which after the first video, my old laptop found harder and harder to do. For obvious reasons, missions like this take a great deal of time and effort, with the only payoffs being a sense of achievement and 
bragging rights, so there's no sense in making a video unless it feels worthwhile making. This might come across as pessimistic, whereas I actually mean it as anything but. What the KSP community has been able to achieve in the time since my last video is astounding. Strats and Blitz orbiting Kerbin only using jet engines, Hoduck going to EVE and back twice in a single launch, Turbo Pumped unleashing the power of the Juno to reach Gilly on 1.6 tons, and Bradley Wistons pulling off a 6 ton Jewel 5 mission. It's insane, and so I'm so grateful to have had my mind blown time and time again. These sentimental thoughts prove to be dangerous to Valentina, as she nearly slams into her only chance of getting back to Kerbin, and comes recklessly close to expending all of her remaining fuel. She squeezes back into the cockpit, and settles in for a nap, as she waits for a good time to set up a transfer to the Mun, which, at the risk of diminishing tension, I have to admit wasn't necessary, but it looks pretty, and is more satisfying, so why not? After the flyby of the Mun, it's a simple matter of a small burn to adjust the inclination of our orbits and lowering the periapsis in preparation for re-entry. As I've mentioned, designing this craft to be as aerodynamic as possible was key in getting it to orbit, but once I had achieved this, I found that I encountered another problem. The craft's lack of drag means that the SSTO can get to a pretty low altitude before it loses much speed at all, which makes overheating a very real risk. To combat this, we aerobrake break over multiple passes to lose as much velocity as possible before making the final descent. Here, we face retrograde and make use of the cargo bay by keeping its doors open, which is the only way of significantly increasing drag as the craft lacks any control surfaces to manage our pitch, and the reaction wheel is too weak to do anything other than keep the SSTO facing in the right direction. It can only manage to do this for so long however, until the thicker atmosphere forces the craft to spin around. After being exposed to the cold of space for so long, Valentina is almost happy to be nearly burned to a crisp as she hurtles over the Kerbal Space Center. At this point, the SSTO is only about one ton lighter than when it left, and we still had some Xenon guests to spare. After waiting for the craft to slow to a safe speed, Valentina deploys the parachute, grateful that she can expect a more gentle landing this time although the strict weight limit meant that she had to leave her swimsuit behind. And so, with the craft splashed down just east of the Kerbal Space Center, the mission is complete. We've taken Valentina to Minmus and back, in a single stage craft weighing less than 4 tons, the lightest ever achieved in stock KSP. If there's anything that I've missed that you would like to know, I'll do my best to answer any questions in the comments. Thank you so much for watching, and I hope you enjoyed the video. And if you watched the last video, I hope you enjoyed that too. I look forward to seeing whatever the KSP community comes up with next.